oh, we we're doing dynamite, but we don't have the numbers yet because we're doing it early. Yeah, they're not. So, nice. eh, who cares? Well, I mean, I can't imagine it being any decent. I mean, I, I imagine the number will be the, the world up against the World Series again last night. Mm-hmm. So, there's definitely not going to be anything over like 650,000. Like, even if it goes up, I can't imagine it being best, especially since the show is so lame. So, all right, let's get into it. My people think I'm, I'm doing hate speech here because I hate AEW. I'm just basically calling call it like I see it. Orange Cassie came out. I uh, he came out with no entrance music, like he's trying to be serious, trying to act serious. He said he entered the ring after his best friend Chuck Taylor had his neck crushed by a steel chair last week. For the bro, they, they do violence on the show, and I can't take it seriously because there's not a lot of suspension, not a lot of respect to the suspension disbelief on this show. Right. So anytime they're doing trying to do serious stuff, it looks like they're trying to cosplay guys trying to be serious, and it doesn't it doesn't come across. But Cassidy's cutting the serious promos and he knows he needs to stop this by cutting the head off the snakes. Talk about Moxley. And he said, Cassidy said he would do it alone. Make sure no one gets hurt. Cassidy removed his shades and challenged Moxley to an AW World Championship match. He said he would take the symbol of the company down Moxley's bag and put it in his own backpack. Cassidy told Moxley that he's not hard to find because he's in the ring every week. And Cassidy put his shades back on and said that he's the next AW World Champion and doesn't need a catchphrase. It's all right, but I'm not, you know... It didn't. It's not made me care about that match at all. Yeah, the only it's like I see people on Twitter and all. Oh, they're making Orange like the Sting against the NWO kind of thing. And Orange is one of the guys that they've. I don't know. He hasn't been buried necessarily. He's always been kept strong. I can. But wins a million matches. He's like he's like he's got the best win loss record in the company. But you don't look at that guy as like a compelling challenger for Moxley. Like a big physical specimen type. No, not really. Right. Mercedes Monet and Camille were backstage, and Renee Paquette approached him and asked Monet for a prediction of Camille's match with Chris Statlander. Monet said she hates terrible questions. Monet puts over Statlander as a powerhouse. Uh, he said she doesn't hold a candle to Camille. Paquette wished Camille luck. Monet said you don't need luck when you're with the CEO. Mm-hmm. So Adam Cole wrestles Buddy Matthews, and this match was set up last week where Buddy Matthews challenged him because he wants to prove he's fragile. So they did the thing here in this match. They showed they showed Kyle O'Reilly watching on the screen in the back, kind of teasing maybe he might, you know, get back with Adam Cole. Who knows? But, bro, they were doing the, the gimmick here. They were doing the Brian Danielson gimmick where Adam Cole's pretending like he's shoot hurt, where the, the doctor has to come in here. But, bro, Adam Cole was doing Hulk Hogan kickouts and finishes in this match and stuff. And it, it, it was, uh, I mean, I don't know what they're trying to accomplish here. Yeah, especially for did an you early see match he, on the show, you know. He kid so Matthews hit Cole with with a with the with the 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 Seth Rollins finisher finishing move. The curb the, stop. The, the the curb stop. Yeah. Matt, Cole picked out at one and hulked up. I'm like, what? Like I said, how do you take this show seriously? You know that they, they don't. They're doing. There's a million finishers in every match of guys kick out of, and it's just it just looks ridiculous, you know. It was so Matthews... when, when, like, see, the thing is, like, you didn't really watch PWG or Ring of Honor. Like, that was interesting then because it was different. Like, wow, Punk just kicked out of a top rope pedigree or whatever. Wow. But when you do it every time and every match and every yeah. week on Dynamite, it's like, well, okay, how do we kill this guy? You know, and, and I know normal, regular, casual fans that watch and go, that's ridiculous. It's, it's like, it's, it's like literally going to, um, like this show is for people that like going to Six Flags every weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like, and you go and you just do the experience. You go up the roller coaster when it goes out. You go ah, you scream one of the spots. I thought the spots were going up. <laughs> it's like the, I mean, literally, and you just go every weekend for, to, or, to the same place. Yeah, get on ride the same five roller coasters, and then you're done. It's like this one seems. Am I right? That's a pretty good analogy. It's a good you, analogy. You it's like it made me think of this one. What if the Fourth of July was every weekend? Every weekend, fireworks. Your every weekend. Your fireworks. <laughs> exactly. So after, so Kyle O'Reilly was shown nine approval of the screen in the back, but but this web match was fifteen minutes. And Cole goes over after he's hulking up and fighting off the pain, and so Cole and Matthews, Cole had called for his music to stop playing, and Cole told Matthews he appreciates what he did, and Cole said Matthews reminded him who the real Adam Cole is. Cole offered a handshake, and Matthew Dunn so they shook hands. But they, they like to shake hands a lot on this show when they're done. The lights go off, and when they come back on, Malachi Black is in the ring, and he's shaking Malachi Black's hand now. Right. So everybody's like, oh. Um, that was actually not a bad spot, but it's like, I'm still, you know, whatever. 
Paquette spoke with private party of with Chris Daniels a private party. Daniels said he and Frankie Kazarian a match with similar stipulations to one private party would have later. Daniels said he lost a match. His relationship with Kazarian hasn't been the same since. Mm. Both private party members expressed confidence they will win. That was interesting. They brought up Frankie Kazarian. Yeah, I'm sure. Adam Cole delivered a promo with Roger Strong, Taven, and Bennett behind him, and he said his ankle. If his ankle isn't what it once was, he said he doesn't blame MJF for that. Oh, by the way, they show MJF watching this match from his home on his sofa when they were wrestling. So <laughs> he said he doesn't blame MJF for that. And Colsey doesn't blame MJF for being a bad friend for never checking up on him. He said he blames MJF for pretending that they would work. Cole said guys like him and MJF are meant to be enemies. And Cole said MJF would have betrayed him the first chance he got. And Cole pointed what MJF did to Wardlow, Sammy, and Dana Garcia. Then Cole said MJF needed to be taught a hard lesson. He said what they did to MJF was extreme, but it needed to happen. Cole said he cares about AEW and his fans, and MJF has never been a part of the team and never will be. And Cole said he will get his hands on MJF a full gear. Be happy to teach him another lesson. Cole said it was one down and two to go, and the broadcast team pointed that Roderick Strong had the same three match challenge. So, all right. It's just, it's odd when you take two compelling characters, or at least popular ones like MJF and Cole. And we had this mailbag question this week or last where it was like, is this the worst? booking AEW is done because they've made their feud disinteresting and confusing. And that's right. how I feel like that all sounds great. I saw some of it on YouTube. I don't care about the match though, because right. the buildup has been so atrocious. Oh, give me one second. Yeah, but, but not I, nonsensical. Good. This, this, this to me was, this is a funny segment. So Kyle Fletcher and Don Callis made their, made their way to the uh, entrance spoke to, from the stage and Fletcher said he, he's got the shaved head. He actually looked pretty good to be honest with you. He said he was a man of his word, and they called out Will Ospreay. Then he looked at the entrance, and Ospreay's music playing. He's not coming out. Then Fletch, Fletcher introduced him twice. He didn't come out. But then Fletcher's partner from the Aussie Open, Mark Davis, walked out. Dude, did you see this? No, I didn't see. I didn't see the segment. Unfortunately, did you see my tweet on this? Uh, uh-uh. bro, the guy's got on a hoodie, okay, and he's got a tank top on. Is it, so a tank top and a hoodie. Yeah. And the tank top had stains on it. <laughs> like he spilled something like like there was like food stains on his on his on his shirt. Right. But pull it up and see if you can see this. Okay. Mark Davis, Will Ospreay, Don Callis. He, he he's his stains on his shirt. He looked he he literally looked like one of these slob fans that walked that, that walked out the way he was dressed. Okay. Davis said that he and Fletcher called us Os- Davis and Fletcher called out Osprey while knowing that he was laid up at home. And Davis said that he and Osprey's still laid up at home for some reason from the beat beating, which is kind of weird. Davis said that he and Fletcher called Osprey brother, and Fletcher said he has open eyes to the truth. He credited Callis with helping to see who Osprey really is. Fletcher told Davis to forget about Osprey, while adding that he's sure Osprey forgot about Davis, and Fletcher off Davis' spot in the family. Davis said they had a united empire, and Fletcher destroyed it. Davis started to walk away, and Fletcher told Davis there will come a day very soon when he will need to make a hard decision. Fletcher said he's already shown that he has no problem cutting the past loose. Do you have any video of this yet? Oh, yep. Here we go. All right. We got to see what this guy is. But... Took a second. But here we go. Adam Cole, but... But this just... And a great reaction from... Sorry, right, right here. Okay. No, it's not. Look at his shirt. Like, like underneath the, the right Austin breast, music, which... he's got a stain on his shirt. And that's Mark Davis. <laughs> hey, look at that. Joe, what do you think about that? It just, it makes me. Like, look at what that guy's walking. This guy's supposed to be a TV star. Yeah. Right? Look at how he's dressed. The only thing it makes me wonder is if, because I don't know him or that tag team that well, is if, that's part of his character. Like maybe he's like a rough and tumble. He's a, he, I don't know. Maybe that's just his, is he a street fighter kind of guy? Like a bar fly guy? I don't he know. He looks like a fan. <laughs> yeah. That walked in with, with the stain on the shirt. You know, I'm, I'm like, well, dude, what are you doing? Come on, man. You're on TV. So Fletcher said he's already shown that he has no problem cutting the pass loose. Whatever. Okay. Backstage, Hangman Page talks about facing Jay White at full gear. He called Nako Jay White out of the Owen Hart Cup tournament. And Page also took credit for Andrew White when he missed time. Page said there's no such thing as redemption. Page said there are only wins and losses. The consequence will follow. And Page said he knows what White's strategy will be, but White doesn't know what his will be. He spoke of strangling White's friends in front of him or possibly burning down his home. And Page said he would leave White hurt with less than he had before. Jay White, I will leave you behind. Page closed. 
you know, I'll be honest with you, as a heel, but I, I like Paige's promos. They're, they're good, but it's like I'm not interested in his angles with anybody but Swerve. You know, right, so right, I'm, and you I'm, can't just he's, transplant what he did with Swerve onto somebody else, where he's like, maybe I'll burn your house down. Maybe, right, well, now nah, that's that's over there. That was that angle. You can't yeah, just but he, do that every time. He, he gets good mileage out of his promos, though. Like he he doesn't really have a promo where he says nothing. You know, so he's he's pretty good on the mic. So the the they were showing the Moxley, Shafir, Wheeler, Utah, and Pack, and Claudio were shown exiting the backstage room. So they come to the ring. They make their entrance to the crowd, head to the ring. Moxley says he doesn't expect Orange Cassidy or anyone else to appreciate what they're trying to do, but when they do, I'll understand. Moxley says Cassidy thinks he challenged him for the AW World Championship, and Moxley said he challenged Cassidy when he had his friend Chuck Taylor's neck broke. Moxley said he cut dead weight in a distraction out of Cassidy's life. And Moxley said Cassidy was dubbed a leader and they didn't want to lead his people. Moxley said he doesn't want Cassidy to catch a disease or the spell the people in AEW under. He said they're fat and happy with their paychecks and think there's something they are not. And Moxley said he doesn't want that for Cassidy. Moxley said when he faces Cassidy, he would do so in the valley. Moxley said Cassidy better be ready to die because he is. Moxley would call Cassidy say no one will get hurt. Moxley said they'd see about that right now. And Moxley spoke to his crew. So for some reason, okay, this was, this was, played did you see this joe mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this was very confusing as it played out shafir and pack took utah yuda down and held him down okay cassidy only went to ringside and returned so they just attacked yuda out of the blue yeah the guy in their group held him down returned with the chair that he put around the neck of yuda orange cassie ran out to help i don't know why he's running out to help because this is the internal thing the part thing he was quickly outnumbered. Shafir spoke with Utah in the corner after trying to hold him down, and then he stood up and started putting the boots to Cassidy. The announcers have no clue how to how, how to how to narrate this. Okay, so it's it looks like complete. It looks ridiculous as, as it's happening. The Dark Order comes out to help. They get beat up quick. Okay, yeah, of course, and and like in just very unmenacing fashion. Like they were just like, like Moxley just like had like 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 just grabbed John Silver in an arm bar mm-hmm. at ringside, like held him in an arm bar, like an arm. Like, this is like the a very just unusual looking attack. The it only, went on for a while. Okay. So I then could, go ahead. The the only well, thing I could think of it from watching it was, and this is from not a regular viewer, but still just kind of understanding the show. They faked out. They're gonna beat up you to to send a message to Cassidy. We don't get. We'll beat up one of our own guys. Or Cass- were, were they? But I, I feel I, like I don't, it, I, that wasn't really fully explained. You, you I know, know this is just my assumption from watching. Oh, <laughs> right, exactly because yeah, 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 yeah. you had to like assume a lot of stuff because it's right. Just, right. And then Cassidy comes for the save because Wheeler's a young guy, and of course Cassidy's I, I, gonna I, clean up for him. <laughs> but then it was right. a trick. But it was a trick they didn't explain to Yuta because, like you said, they had to tell him in the corner, like, hey, we didn't really mean that. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, okay. And then he starts stopping Cassidy. Yeah, it was very okay. – yeah. So then they missed the, the, the shot you want to get here. Darby repels from the ce- from the ceiling like Sting. But all they showed no. was the camera shot the floor of when he landed. You didn't. They didn't get the wide shot showing him from from the top, like like coming down. So it's a complete wasted. With the, they got no camera shot of it. I'd be I, so, like what a risk you're taking too. I mean, okay, you know, it's only it's been, a, it's been an accident once, but it's right. still scary to be up there that high and drop. You know, and it, you're like, yo, you didn't even get that. <laughs> like, come right. on. So then, Darby's trying to fight, and he still get the big attack to to his thing, the rope. Okay, <laughs> so he's having trouble fighting. Right. So they beat out of him too they like claudio like throws him through tables and you know just just beats him up and so then all the other baby faces come out hang on what's going on here oh yeah that was always fun i can't see these pop-up ads on pro wrestling pro wrestling.net trying to make that money now that was always fun back in the day too though when when sting would come down right occasionally he'd have trouble unstrapping so like Conan and Hall and Pac would have to look at each other and like, how do we wait for him to unstrap so he can start hitting us? You know, like you know, right. that was always fun to watch. Right. So then, so then all this chaos is going, bro. And this and this brawl was was like a you know a while. Like this took up like a good a good chunk of TV time, right? It wasn't very good looking, you know, brawling. Okay. 
So then, okay, what is wrong with my progress in debt? Okay, so then, pop up ads on progress and debt net are crazy here. Come on, Jason Powell, what's going on here? All right, here we go. Now I got it. Okay, so so then, all the other baby faces cleared the ring. Came in and like 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 helped him. You know the all the what's their names? Well, the Bucks um, came out. Yeah, well, the well, the so no, no, so uh, so I gotta read this here. Yeah. So Leo Rush, Garcia, Dante Martin, oh, yeah. all those guys that they, they come out, and so finally the Moxley's crew retreats. So then the Young Bucks music plays. So they come out for the for their match with Mark Quinn and I, I the cast for the the private party again. So they then they do the ring introductions. So the so the announcers didn't really have any. Give them any time to explain what the storyline that just happened because it, it, everybody's cleared out. You went right into the match. Right into the match, they go. There's a million kickouts of finishes. So private party eventually gets there. It's a gin and juice, and they they pin them one, two, three in eighteen minutes. So after the match, the Bucks took the title belts away from from them, and they looked at the belts and they hand them back to private party, and congratulate them before leaving the flip in the ring. So the other side, the, the, the losers, the heels congratulated the winners for winning. There's no heat. Then they 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 when the crowd and started celebrating. Uh, and then they all just all went to the back, <laughs> and you know, it's all right. So so then backstage, so then then we go to backstage and Paquette is speaking with Jamie Hayter and Penelope Ford, and know they had agreed to no physicality in their interview segment. And Paquette asked him about their match on next week's show. Ford said she'd been with the company since day one and said she would take what she deserves, accuse Hater of taking it from her. Hater said she'd mop the floor with her. I, I don't even know why they had this segment. Uh, they showed a tale of the tape for Strickland versus Sheldon Benjamin. Jericho, Big Bill, and Brian Keith are on the stage, and Bill gave a little speech about teamwork, and Jericho's in his high guys. And bro, when, when Jericho does the high guys now, the crowd waves. Okay, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he goes like this. Jericho sticks his hand up, like for five seconds, they goes, "Hi guys." Yeah. <laughs> so I think I mean, bro, he's, he's, did... con he's conditioned. This is, people are so dumb. Okay, he's conditioning the crowd to when he puts his hand up. Now the crowd is going to put his hand up, and when he starts waving, the crowd's going to start waving. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. better, and he knows, like, oh, okay, the crowd doesn't want me around. I'll trick him again, just like he did with the list, just like he did with he used to. He got the word "it" over in WWE. He's right, going to get. It and the whole crap. Okay. It, you know, like he's yeah, he's yeah, he's just smart. He's not he knows how to brand everyone. himself. Okay, Pretty so much. then, so Jericho said the ladder match last week was something special. The Wrestling Observer said we remember for a long time, and Jericho said Meltzer gave the match four stars. <laughs> Jericho said he couldn't have done it without Bill and Keith, and Jericho acted like he messed up by starting to say they were in Cincinnati, which got some booze. <laughs> Jericho mentioned his role in Terrific or Terrifier Three, which we we spoken about this show. I didn't even know he was in it. Jericho said he would take Ring of Honor to its biggest success because he's Chris Jericho and he can. Jericho said if you underestimate him, that you are overestimating your knowledge of the television pro wrestling business. I thought that was a good line. Mm -hmm. Never underage Chris Jericho, you, Keith said. And Jericho went to David Lee Rothman while telling fans to reach down between the legs, ease their seat back, and enjoy the ride while it takes Ring of Honor and all of you to place in heights you've never seen before. He should do that in every interview due to an interview. old, memorable li lyric from, from Rock and Roll. Yeah. Well, I, he used to do it on Nitro, and even then, 25 years ago, 30, people would kind of be like, wait, was that a reference? To, like, he would, I want you to want, to want me. me. Right. Yeah. People would be like, oh, that's hilarious. And other people are going, right. wait a minute, is that the reference? Like, he's right. always had that kind of, yeah. So Alex Marvis was trying to speak with the Young Bucks, but they were, but Jack Perry stopped him from entering the elite dressing room. Then Danny Garcia said Perry would lose next, be next to lose his title. Then Perry shoved Garcia. Garcia shoved him up against the wall. Garcia said he's sick of entitled guys like Perry. He said the fans used to dance for him too. <laughs> They're trying to make Daniel Garcia this like tough badass. He's bullying Jack Perry. That is, it's comical to me. So after Garcia left, Perry entered the elite's dressing room and Okada was seen in a chair while the Bucks were stuffing their gear in their bag quickly and Brandon Cutler was shredding documents. <laughs> Okay, Perry shoved the camera in another room and closed the door. Sorry. Bro, this better be a good payoff with everything that they're doing here because this stuff just it comes across as like not you have no clue what's going on, and the announcers have no clue what's going on, right? Yeah. I would imagine that then it has something to, it has to be a crossover somehow with Moxley's takeover. And maybe if they really do bring Shane in and he's a part of Moxley's thing, that's the only thing I can gather from that is maybe they're trying to get
out of there before Shane comes in. I don't know, something, something like that. All right, so somebody doesn't like Camille because she was Chrisette Statler. She had Mercedes Monet out there. And bro, Camille went for uh, Statlander went for a or Camille went for a Tombstone pile driver. Statlander reversed the Tombstone pile driver, gave the Tombstone fab and pinned her one two three. Yeah, that's, that's which looked like a, almost like a like a, a weak victory. Right. Okay, because usually in AW there's nine false finishes before you do something like that that gets the win. Mm-hmm. So this did not make this ruin. I mean. Took a chunk out of Camille's stock by far. So after the match, Monet ran in and hit Statler from behind with one of the title belts. Monet barked at Camille to go to the back. So she's punking her out and told her Camille's just doing it. This is so bad. It's like Monet, yeah, yeah. You, you know, and I know. Well, I don't know, like you know, but I can assume. And if we had Conan on, he knows that it's exactly what you said. Somebody was like, "No, no, this new, no, she's not getting anything over on me." Or you know what, Statler's. Been I, don't, I don't know that kind of right. Thing. It's kind of weird, but basically, Monet said that when you want something done right, you do it yourself. Monet held the TBS title belt and stat when her face and her music played. Bro, they're doing the exact same. Cam- Monet and Camille is the exact same gimmick as Wardlow and MGF and, and Lucha Soros and Christian. The ex- literally the exact same yeah. angles. Yep. So Christian Cage stood backstage with Wayne, Mother Wayne, and Kip Sabian. Christian said there was a bit of a misunderstanding with Hook last week. He said he wanted to extend an olive branch and invited Hook to join him in the ring next week so he can explain himself. Did I miss anything here? I thought there was a spot with... Oh, they were showing the... They did a package on the... Uh, what's his name? On the Kip Sabian stuff. Yeah. Right? Awesome. So what do we got next here? Next was... Okay, so Excalib- Okay, so Piquette spoke with Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly, and Tom- Tomohiro Ishii. Okay? B- Briscoe does all the talking again. Kyle O'Reilly and, Riley and Tomohiro Ishii stand there like... like like statues say nothing. This is terrible. Bro, this, this, this is a waste of time to do these segments. Then. Mark Briscoe does all the talking. The other guys get, you get nothing. Uh, the, the other guys don't speak it. Like I said, they should do a gimmick one weekend where, where Kyle O'Reilly steps in and say, hey, can I say something for a change? Yeah. There's something in, these are completely not interesting interview segments because Briscoe's promos are kind of like, he's like, you know, he's talks like, like he's something, you know? No, agreed. So whatever. So, so at the end of the segment, when they were walking out, Ishii said, as he was walking by, said something to the camera. I don't know what he said, but it was like like a quick six-word sentence. So we finally get to hear Ishii say something. So then they go to Jackson's. They were ex- making a quick exit from the building. They blew off Marvez. And Christopher Daniels tried to stop them for some reason. I guess because of the, the, the EPs. They don't want the EVPs. They don't want to go. The Massey said they wanted to change the world, but Daniels and nobody else would listen to him. And the Massey said he'd be working from home. Then Brand Cut- Brandon Cutler stumbled around with a box while calling for the Bucks not to leave without him, even though he already left. Then John Moxley showed up, and Pac choked out Cutler, while Moxley forced Daniels to watch. But he, but bro, he had Daniels just like by the, the like Daniels could have easily broken free from him, <laughs> right? It was so I don't know what he was doing. He punked out, punked out Daniels here. Okay, this looks silly. And then, then Castagnoli slammed a hammer, and they broke. They like they, they broke Cutler's hand for some reason. It's, it's and the announcers like, have no clue what's, what's going on. Yeah, like you know. So it's like I said just... earlier, like it has it's it's somehow intertwined with the Bucks trying to shred documents and pack and run. Like they're coming for them. That's why they went for Cutler. But it, again, you're right; it's not being explained. I'm just deducing that or assuming. Right. So then we go to the main event, and it's Swerve versus Sheldon. Um, so Swerve beats Sheldon, okay, clean, clean pin with the Swerve Stomp, which I'm not a fan of, okay, because I would, I don't know why you'd be beating Sheldon because after the match, the MVP MVP pulls out his phone, he's making a call, <laughs> so then Bobby Lashley's music play because he got called, like you know, I, I don't know, this is it's, I, I I get it, but it also exactly like that suspension of disbelief. It's like, yeah, but he's already there. Like, I mean, right. the call, like, I think he might have been watching the match on the monitor, too. Like, he'd probably know it was time, whatever. Right. So, so then MVP, so they, they come to the ring. Lashley comes out. looks great. Him and Swerve have a stare down. Um, Sheldon tries to get in the ring. Swerve nails him, turns around. Lashley clotheslines him. And he gives him a choke. They, they double team and give him a choke, like a, like a running choke slam thing. Yeah. They beat up, MVP beats up Prince Nana. Yes. They leave him laying. MVP stands between everybody and they stand over and says, we're back in business. 
Yeah. And that's the end of the show. So the Hurt Business is back together. But like, I don't, I don't think you needed the the the, the Sheldon loss here. If you're going to have Bobby Latch, just have him come out and inter- interfere or something. Just, Close you know, EQ. Yeah. Or... I'm like, Sheldon didn't need a loss. Swerve didn't need the win. And they're going with him and him and him and Bobby, you know? The whole story know. of Sheldon's career is like that, where right now he's just, a, he was a stepping stone to Bobby. And he, he's always been underutilized and underappreciated. And he was again here. Right. Yeah. So that's, we don't know what the, 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 the dynamite rating was as of recording here, but I can't imagine it's, don't expect anything good because they went against Game Five of the World Series, and the show is about the same as it's been every week. So I, I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of the show, but I am interested to see where this, these stories are going because I'm just, I don't have any clue what's going on or why they're, yeah. they're like the young bucks are scared. Are they scared of Moxley's crew? Or what? Or are they bring, whatever? If they're coming, if they're bringing in if they're bringing coming, in Shane McMahon, yeah. Okay. This they this story's going on way too long. Yeah, it's been uh, like yeah, yeah. I mean, how long has it been since we first heard this? Six, eight weeks. Long? I mean, for, forever. It's, yeah, been, it's three, been a while. Three months almost. You know? yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. all right. So that's been our AEW review. Enjoy the rest of the show. Boom. All right. Um. Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive, unedited, uncensored content. And being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams. Uh, Thank you for your support. Thank you for riding with us. I know you got a lot of other uh, podcast choices, be it wrestling or other ones. And thank you for picking us. Boom.